Fish, got him. I got him right there, bud. <laughs> I think we can work on this ridge for a while. <laughs> Maybe I won't get a blade bait out. I keep threatening to get a blade bait out, and every time I go to do it, I catch another saw guy. <laughs> Come on up in here, buddy. <laughs> and we on our show, we're terrible about describing the difference between saw guys and walleyes. And, and I know from, I'm told by a biologist that these are saw guys. And, uh, and so there you go. There's another one. Looks suspiciously like the others. And now we are racking them up at this point. And our little gold minnow is paying the bill. So far, there's three, four boats right here besides us. And we're the only ones catching anything. And they're trolling. When I got to Adobe Creek, I didn't really know what to expect, to be honest with you. Uh, I hadn't been to that lake. I, I knew that there wasn't a lot of structure in it just from looking at basic maps. Um, but didn't didn't really have any idea. So if you throw a gold minnow, you're always in the hunt because it smells right, it tastes right, it looks right. If a fish gets close enough to it, he's gonna bite it. And if he bites it, he's gonna hold it and give me a chance to detect it and, and set the hook. And those are very important keys to that bait. Um, the three inch size is the most standard. We throw that a ton, almost always on an eight ounce jig head, same with this show. Uh, almost always on six pound, try in 100% fluorocarbon. And why fluorocarbon instead of braid? I can tell you why. Uh, I throw it on braid sometimes, but typically I do that around vegetation or running water. Vegetation, so I can snap the bait out of the vegetation and rip the grass off it. Or in running water, because of the resistance in the water, the monofilament or fluorocarbon is so much thicker that the, the sweeping current will create drag. Whereas braid, it doesn't do that so much. And also I get instantaneous hook sets in the current. I can stay tight. In the situation of fishing the gold meadow in some place like Adobe Creek, there's not enough vegetation to worry about for one. For two, the fish are going to be close to me. I'm not making long giant throws. In fact, a lot of them I'm right directly underneath the boat. And the, the fluoro is more forgiving in that regard as well. It's also in some ways just a little bit easier to fish with. I don't have to worry about leaders or anything like that. And so it can be a little easier to fish with. So on that particular day, it was a three inch minnow, the eight ounce jig head, six pound, 100% fluorocarbon. Uh, my standard gold minnow rod, which is 610, medium light, extra fast, and, and a little MGX Revo MGX reel. It's such a standard combo for me. So I'm doing a typical pattern I'll do when we deal with walleyes or saw guys, either one, uh, in summertime. And that is a lot of jigging, a lot of gulp. Uh, it just seems like this time of year, if you, you can really get a lot of fish to bite the gold minnow. And, so I've got a three inch gold minnow, I've got it on an eighth ounce jig head, stained my standard gold minnow setup. And, uh, and the whole point is to get it on the bottom and make it look more or less alive. So I'm hopping it around to help them locate it. Uh, not necessarily fishing it real fast per se, but I'm not all dead sticking it either. I just want to keep it moving enough to help the fish find it. I've got it real bright, I've got it in chartreuse and white because we've got some stain to the water right here. Fish, got him. There we go. All right, well that didn't take us very long, guys. <laughs> All right, it took me a minute to get tight on that one. And, uh, and that's what we're told there's lots of in here. We're gonna swing him up in the boat. That's what we were told by the hatchery tech out in uh, Eastern Colorado that there was lots of, and he thumped that gold minnow guys right there. It didn't take very long for the whole crowds to show up. And, and it was definitely the fill the coolers crowd, which is what that lake's associated with. And just for the record, I have no problem with that, but that's what everybody was there doing. Uh, almost everybody showed up and were trolling. And I suspect that, that it's because the lack of structure in the lake. There's no obvious place to fish. There's no place that jumps out of you saying, yeah, right here, this point is where I should fish or this big hump or anything like that. There's nothing there. It's mud and, and some rock bottom and some areas and that's it. And uh, because of that, it was the most popular technique, let's just say. And in the morning, the funny part was the trollers weren't catching anything, and we started catching them right away. And that's because we're fishing on the spot. We're sitting on one little roll or one little break, and it only took me a couple of minutes to connect with walleyes and saw guys and crappies because I studied the graph first as we ran around until I found what I, the hard spot that I thought might be the right idea. Conversely, the trollers just keep trolling around until they stumble into fish, which is also a fantastic idea, but they weren't biting well in the morning and the trollers weren't catching them. By afternoon, the trollers were catching them faster than we were catching them because we wore out our spots. And that's a key thing. The trollers don't wear a spot out because they're going all over the place. And we've talked to several folks that day, a bunch of kids, 
ran into some fans on the lake and people were literally trolling right by us because we didn't care. We're sitting on a spot and let them go and they would troll by, you know, half a cast length from our boat and, uh, and have a conversation with us. And we didn't care because the fish in that scenario are A, used to a lot of boat traffic and two, they're not really set up on one spot. So they move around a little bit and they're just generally hovering over a hard spot on the bottom. Is that any good? We've caught a bunch, how about y'all? Yeah, we just turned around right there and caught a five pound town cat. Oh, nice, very good. The trollers were mostly pulling hard baits of some sort, um, flicker shads. One guy we talked to was pulling flicker shads, actually convinced me to get a flicker shad out and throw it, and we did. Um, I learned from other anglers just like you guys do. This guy's like, oh, they love flicker shads here. So I got one out, I tied it on, and we caught a couple of fish with it as well. The, the morning, we were out fishing the trollers, and now in the afternoon, the trollers are soundly out fishing us, the guys that are pulling crankbaits. We talked to one guy who's got three flicker shads on, and he's caught a lot of fish in the last couple of hours whereas our bite slowed down. So I think it has to do a little bit with the different level of feeding activity. When they're not feeding, you need to cover more of the flat. When they are feeding, you can settle in and jig them better, as we showed you. So that may have a lot to do with that. Of course, a, a very diverse angler would be adept at both. The guy, Dan Swanson, that works with me, his boat set up accordingly. He'd come out here and jig all day, uh, or all morning, you know, and then put the boards out and get after him trolling in the afternoon. And this, I've got a real bright color on. Uh, there's one right there. It's like lime green. Be real gentle with him, real gentle, because he's just wee little crappie and he's on there. Come on up here, buddy. <laughs> Thing with the flicker shad, just like any other crankbait, it might be a finesse crankbait, but I'm never going to wind it 100 yards in one direction. You know, I'm always going to pull on it with the rod a little bit and give it a little bit of a pulse or a stall or I'll steer it, uh, commonly I'll steer the bait a lot, go in that route, uh, just maybe a couple faster turns on the reel handle every so often to speed it up ever, ever so slightly. Uh, but anything other than just wind it in a straight line, most typically I'm gonna pull it with the rod to control the action of the bait because that's what gives me the feel. Is it vibrating hard or is it, is it just barely vibrating or whatever the case might be. Throwing it on the Nanofill will for sure give you a chance for that. Look at that guys, how nice is that? When you got the rod hanging off one side of the boat and it gets bit, and then you set the rod down on the other side of the boat and it's trolling along 10 feet behind the boat, and you catch a beautiful baby little crappie. Isn't that the cutest little crappie you've ever seen? I love crappie. I slid in a little bit because we got those couple of crappies in a row right there. We always keep track of depth range, you know, more than almost any other variable. And in this case today, we've been bit as shallow as like four feet and as deep as like 12. So. It's just been, they've just roamed all over, there's one right there. They've just roamed all over this flat. And, uh, and as if you just cover enough of this flat real gentle, that's a crappie and you have to be, no, it's not a crappie. I don't have to be quite as gentle with that one. There's a saw guy, guys. And yet another saw guy on a little, little flicker shad, bright colored flicker shad, bright colored gulp minnows, adobe, adobe, ah, adobe Creek State Wildlife Area. Guys, I've caught so many fish, I'm flustered.